We are dealing with the fingerprints of a lost civilization that mapped the world and that left evidence of that mapping. The entire outer crust of the Earth like the skin of an orange. Antarctica, the icy land at the bottom of the Earth, known for its freezing weather, strange animals and scientific work, has revealed something surprising. For a long time, some people have talked about aliens and old cities in Antarctica, but there was no proof. Now scientists have found something there that has shocked them. What did they find? Could it be that aliens really live in Antarctica? Let's find out together as we explore this unexpected discovery. Graham Hancock's horrifying theories about Antarctica. The theories that renowned British author Graham Hancock has developed concerning ancient civilizations are quite intriguing, even though they significantly differ from mainstream scientific views. According to him, a part of this very advanced civilization was located in the area that is now the icy expanse of Antarctica. This is a rather bold and striking speculation, considering that the current condition in Antarctica can simply be described as freezing, such that even plants don't grow there. Hancock links his theory to the hypothesis of Earth crust displacement. He gave the example that the entire outer crust of the Earth is like the skin of an orange and might shift, leaving most of the Earth in place. Now, what this theory suggests is that contrary to popular modern beliefs, Antarctica was not always located at the cold, snow-white South Pole, but might actually have been in a more temperate and warmer region, allowing a civilization to thrive there in the past. However, it is important to note here that this idea of Earth crust displacement that Hancock holds onto is not supported by the current scientific understanding of plate tectonics, which doesn't allow for such rapid and dramatic shifts of the Earth's crust. According to him, some myths and legends that people disregard because of their obvious false nature are not myths per se. He interprets them as allegorical references to this lost civilization, and he particularly focuses on stories of great floods or cataclysms. He proposes that such a cataclysm, maybe a flood or a comet impact, was what led to the downfall of this advanced civilization. According to his theory, those who survived the catastrophe might have traveled around the world, spreading their advanced knowledge and significantly influencing the development of later civilizations like the Egyptians and Sumerians. While Hancock's theory is under heated debate, one of the more fascinating aspects of it is how he points out the similarities in architectural structures and astronomical alignments at various ancient sites. He believes that these are potential evidence of a shared origin of knowledge, suggesting that this knowledge could have been passed down from an earlier civilization. Hancock is of the opinion that this civilization's legacy includes not just advanced architectural techniques and astronomical observations, but potentially other lost technologies and wisdom. It is true that his ideas certainly capture people's imaginations and they are highly thought-provoking. It's very important to remember that the scientific community views them with quite some skepticism. The reason for this is not far-fetched. During the Eocene Epoch, Antarctica was a completely different world from what we know it to be today. Although contrary to Hancock's theory, the location was not different. It was actually positioned over the South Pole, the same way it is now. The main difference between the Antarctica of them and now is in the weather conditions. Thus, the climate at that time differed distinctly from how it is now. It was way warmer, allowing for an entirely different kind of environment. This was a time when the continents were undergoing a peculiar movement. They were still shifting around after the supercontinent, Pangaea, broke up. So Antarctica, which was part of what was called Gondwana after falling apart, was slowly moving to where it currently sits and it became isolated at the extreme end of the world. It may be your first time hearing that there was once a supercontinent and all the current continents were part of it until they shifted. But this shifting around of continents played a very significant role in changing the currents of the ocean, and it also affected the climate. Antarctica back then was very fascinating, and one of the most striking things about it was that it didn't have the massive sheet of ice that it has today. And it's easy to see why. The absence of this ice sheet was mainly because of the very much warmer global temperatures at that time. It had a big effect on the planet's climate because the reflective ice that sends solar radiation back into space wasn't there, contributing greatly to the overall warmth. 
During the Eocene period, the tectonic movements were also quite significant. The breakup of Gondwana was a major event that reshaped the layout of the Earth's land and water. A key moment was when the Drake Passage, the stretch of water between Antarctica and South America, was opened. The opening of the passage was a game changer because it led to the creation of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, which is a massive ocean current that goes around Antarctica. This current had a huge impact on the climate. It seemed to wrap Antarctica in a climatic bubble, circulating cold water all around it and blocking off the warmer waters from the north from getting through to the south. It is believed that this current played a major role in cooling down Antarctica and leading to the ice-covered, freezing continent we know today. One might be led to ask, if this was the condition of Antarctica, then it was greatly favorable. However, what was life like back then? The records of fossils are really fascinating. They paint a radically different picture of Antarctica. The records show that the cold continent supported a diverse range of plants and even had animals, meaning that there were temperate to subtropical forests with beaches, conifers, and ferns. Can you imagine how it must have been? In place of today's icy desert, was the climate much warmer and more humid? Then there's also the sea level, which was way higher than what we see now. The reason is because there weren't those big hillkike ice molds locking up all the water. How do you know that sea level rose? There are certain corals that can only exist within a certain number of feet of the sea's surface. This meant that the coastline and the shape of the land were quite different, and some places that are land now were actually underwater back then. Well, the sudden change in environmental characteristics has been attributed to the Paleocene. The Paleocene. If indeed the temperatures were warmer and sea levels were higher, it would have made the marine life around Antarctica very rich and equally diverse. It would indeed be very different from what we see now. The Eocene epoch, which started about 56 years ago and ended about 34 million years ago, was a really interesting period in the history of Earth. The era was part of a much bigger period called the Paleogene period, and it's a part of what scientists call the Cenozoic era. This era is often nicknamed the Age of Mammals, and the reason is because it was when mammals started their diversification, especially after the already extinct species of dinosaurs had their big exit at the end of the Cretaceous period. It was during the Eocene that the continents of the world were on the move, drifting towards where they are presently located. As earlier mentioned, this movement was a very big deal because it changed the manner in which ocean currents flowed and affected the climate in a lot of ways. Now, one of the most striking things about the Eocene era was an event called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. By scientific estimation, this happened about 56 million years ago, and it was a time when the Earth got really warm at great speed. At that time, world temperatures shot up by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius in just a few thousand years. As to why this happened, after numerous studies, scientists came up with the theory that the cause of this might have been because of a ton of methane that was released from the ocean floor. This worldwide temperature increase had a huge impact on life on Earth. In the oceans, some species went extinct while the ones on land started to evolve and diversify at an insane speed. Furthermore, the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere were way higher than what we have today. According to estimates, it was between 1,000 and 2,000 parts per million, compared to the pre-industrial level of just about 280 ppm. This high level of CO2 was said to have come from things like volcanic activity, the burning of organic matter, and because natural carbon sinks weren't as effective. One of the very big differences between the Eocene period and the recent millennia was that there were no major ice sheets at the poles, that is, the southern and northern poles. Compared to today, where we have giant ice molds in both the Arctic and Antarctic, the difference is simply outrageous because the Earth was so much warmer. The temperature difference between the equator and the poles wasn't as extreme as it is now. As a result, the polar regions were much warmer than they are today, and because there was less ice, sea levels were higher, meaning that a lot of water that's currently frozen in ice was in the ocean back then. This affected marine life a lot, changing where different species lived, as well as leading to the development of new types of marine ecosystems. Mysterious emerging in frozen lands of Antarctica. 
The discovery of pyramids in Antarctica almost broke the internet. Pyramids are known to exist in countries like Egypt and Peru, so why on earth are there pyramids in Antarctica? Amid the spotlessly white landscapes of the ice-covered continent of Antarctica, a mysterious structure stands imposingly, piercing the ice and staring at the world. This figure, a supposed pyramid, is visible under the dense layers of frost in the Ellsworth mountain range. And of course, it has generated a host of conspiracy theories, capturing the imagination of many people. But as any seasoned traveler knows, not everything is as it seems. You don't even have to be a seasoned traveler to know that ancient pyramids, as grand and majestic as they are, are always cloaked in mystery. And they are primarily associated with places like Egypt, Sudan, Mexico, Italy, Iraq, and Peru. Pyramids bear testament to past civilizations in these lands with their intricate designs and construction methods. As a result, the discovery of such a structure in Antarctica is just as thrilling as it is disconcerting and confusing. However, it's essential that we differentiate fact from fiction. An aerial view of the intriguing formation was shown by recent Google Earth images that have intensified speculation. At first glance, the supposed pyramid looks like a sharp mountain. Its top shoots out from the frozen tundra. Now this is where the interesting things begin. Speculations have long started circulating, bearing the question of whether it is a creation of an ancient civilization, long lost to time, or more interestingly, whether it is an extraterrestrial craftsmanship. The detectives of Earth's mysteries, known as geologists, have long begun their research in order to ascertain the true nature of this wonder. As countless speculations flew back and forth on social media, with images and theories making their rounds, these experts began weighing in on the matter. According to a Californian university professor, Eric Rignot, an expert in Earth system science, the whole thing may be just a needless fuss about nothing. According to him, the structure is just a mountain that looks much like a pyramid. He further elaborated that pyramid shapes are not entirely impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that, contrary to a pyramid, which has four. According to the results of geological consensus, the structure's steep, pyramid-like sides result from hundreds of millions of years of erosion. Dr. Mitch Darcy, an eminent geologist at the German Research Center for Geosciences, provided further clarity, stating when she stated that the pyramid-shaped structures are located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range more than 400 kilometers long. So it's no surprise there are rocky peaks cropping out above the ice. To Darcy, the rock formation's semblance to a pyramid is just a mere coincidence. Darcy goes ahead to shed more light on the actual nature of the pyramid by explaining that, in terms of definition, it is a noon attack. A noon attack is simply a peak of rock that sticks out above a glacier or a sheet of ice. This structure has the shape of a pyramid, but that doesn't make it a human construction, meaning that it's a complete natural formation. The Nameless Mountain is located in an area known as the Heritage Range, an area that is no stranger to historic wonders. Remarkable fossils have been discovered there, some dating back more than 500 million years. Standing at 4,150 feet, this structure might not really be imposing compared to other mountains, but its complicated nature leaves people in perpetual imagination, while the Antarctic Pyramid has stirred excitement and speculation, which might not be in point, it serves as a testament to our planet's natural wonders. As the world continues to debate its origins, the icy pyramid-like mountain remains a testament to the ever-evolving landscape of the Earth, an emblem of natural beauty and mystery in the heart of ice-covered Antarctica. But the question still remains, how did these pyramids come about? Were they developed by a now extinct civilization? Evidence of ancient civilizations found in Antarctica. The most striking thing about the history of Antarctica is its presence on ancient maps. It's really just as surprising as it is confusing because the continent wasn't discovered until 1820. Graham Hancock has a really fascinating theory about an ancient, advanced civilization that he believes existed long before the civilizations that we commonly recognize, like the Sumerians of Mesopotamia. If we go with his idea, then we'll push the timeline of advanced human societies 
tens of thousands of years back, probably even into the last ice age. This is a huge leap from the established historical understanding, which generally sees the emergence of complex societies and civilizations. Hancock places emphasis on the incredible architectural designs of ancient megalithic structures, like those found at Goke in Turkey, Stonehenge in England, and various sites including the pyramids and sphinx of Giza in Egypt, as well as other sites in Mesoamerica. He sees these as evidence that the lost civilization had highly advanced architectural knowledge. He goes further to point out the astronomical precision of these great structures. A striking example is how the great pyramids of Giza align perfectly with the stars of Orion's belt. Another instance is how Stonehenge in England aligns accurately with the solstices and equinoxes. According to him, these structures weren't just randomly positioned, they suggest a deep understanding of the stars and seasons. He also explains that this civilization had impressive navigational skills, which might explain how similar architectural and astronomical concepts appeared across different continents. But it's not just about the buildings and their alignment with celestial events. Hancock thinks these ancient monuments reflect a comprehensive knowledge of astronomy that was integrated into the culture and religious practices of the time. He also suggests evidence of sophisticated urban planning in ancient ruins, indicating a level of societal organization and city-building knowledge. Hancock theorizes that the similarities in architectural styles and astronomical knowledge across various ancient cultures around the world point to a common, advanced source of knowledge. This knowledge could have been spread by the survivors of this ancient society. The theories that Graham Hancock proposes really take on a global perspective when it comes to the influence of long-lost, advanced civilizations. He explains that this civilization had a major impact all over the world. Rather than a localized phenomenon, it's something that spreads across continents. According to him, we can see traces of this civilization in the myths, architectural designs, and astronomical knowledge of many different ancient cultures. Hancock suggests that there's a kind of cultural diffusion that took place from this lost civilization to later societies. So the similar styles in buildings or common themes in religious beliefs and astronomical practices across various ancient cultures that we see are not mere coincidences. He interprets them as evidence of their influence. When it comes to evidence, there are some archaeological sites and findings that he feels mainstream archaeology hasn't been able to explain. These are the things he looks at. He talks about structures that he thinks are in need of pretty advanced engineering or astronomical know-how to build. He also plunges into ancient writings and myths, which he believes are not just stories or legends, but allegorical records of real historical events. Think of tales about great floods or lost lands like Atlantis. According to him, the long-lost advanced civilizations are all intertwined. He sees all this as collective memories of the lost civilization. He also notes the fact that there are some cross-cultural similarities, like how myths from different parts of the world seem to share common themes, or how architectural styles and astronomical knowledge seem to resonate with each other, even across cultures that supposedly never interacted. And so the fact that all these historical civilizations resonate with present cultural practices is strong evidence of their existence but his theories are not limited to Antarctica. In fact, he has theories about virtually anything that has to do with ancient civilization. Connections between Antarctica and the Sahara Desert. It was discovered that the extremely hot and unfriendly Sahara Desert was not always like this. In the endless stretch of the Sahara Desert, a realm often associated with its extremely hot, inhospitable nature, Recent scientific discoveries have unearthed ancient ruins, forgotten cities, and intriguing mysteries that make us question our understanding of human history. From the remnants of an enormous lake that once thrived in the Western Sahara, a place known as the Eye of the Sahara, this dry land holds the keys to unraveling the stories of our ancestors and the civilizations that once flourished beneath its hot, shifting sands. Surprisingly, Scientific exploration has led to the revelation of the existence of a massive lake that existed approximately 500,000 years ago. This large body of water, stretching over 42,000 square miles, served as the second largest lake in the world at the time. 
Okay, yeah, that's a surprising fact. To think that the hot Sahara was once home to one of the largest lakes, the river known as the Nile, which is mostly associated with Egypt, once flowed into this ancient lake, now buried beneath the Sahara's dunes. Evidence, including ancient fish fossils and human remains, suggests that this lake played a crucial role as a rest stop for early human migrations through the desert. Without this oasis-like refuge, the journey across the Sahara might have been impossible. There is a structure that lies at the very heart of the Sahara called the Richat structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara. This geological marvel spans about 28 miles in diameter, and it has drawn comparisons to the description of Atlantis given by Plato. Even though it looks to be man-made, the Richat structure is a natural formation shaped by geological processes. While Plato's Atlantis was described as a city submerged underwater, let's note here that the Sahara was not always a dry desert. This factor opens up the possibility that an ancient civilization within the Richat structure may have been flooded by a large body of water. However, there is still no conclusive evidence to back it up. Renowned author Graham Hancock steps into the picture and proposes his interesting theory. He suggests that an ancient, advanced civilization was destroyed by floods, which were caused by a massive comet impact around 12,800 years ago. He believes that the survivors of this catastrophe spread knowledge of science, technology, agriculture, and grand building to other societies. Under the Sahara's surface, the remnants of forgotten civilizations have been gradually uncovered. From all indications so far, the Garamante civilization, a potent African kingdom, once thrived in the desert, showcasing advanced urban planning, metallurgy, and textile production. The Romans also have history with the desert. As to how this is possible, the ruins of Tamagadi, an ancient Roman city in what is today known as Algeria, stand as a testament to Rome's southern frontier. With its arches, amphitheaters, and bathhouses, Tamagadi provides a glimpse into the grandeur of Roman civilization in the heart of the Sahara. As archaeological technology advances, the Sahara's secrets are becoming more accessible. Satellite surveys enable remote investigation, offering a new approach to exploring the desert's vast expanses. However, challenges such as political instability and the harsh environment hinder extensive excavations. The hope remains that future discoveries will shed light on the mysteries buried beneath the Sahara's shifting sands. If there is one thing that science won't stop trying to probe, it is the existence of aliens. Aliens in Antarctica, facts or myth? When the announcement was made, it was simply mind-blowing and people could not help but imagine the possibilities that these would open. What announcement? That not only had archaeologists found the remains of historic inhabitants of Antarctica, but at the same time, the remains could be from aliens. Just moments after the story was released, the internet shook as it went viral online. The story claimed that three ancient skulls were discovered by a team of archaeologists. The reason why it was seen as mind-blowing was not only because it was thought at the time Antarctica was first reached by humans in 1820, hundreds of years after the suspected age of the skulls, some commentators immediately claimed they could have been the remains of aliens who visited Earth in the distant past. The reports claim that an archaeologist by the name of Damien Waters and his crew uncovered the skulls in a region of Antarctica called La Pai. Upon this discovery, they were hailed as the first human remains uncovered from Antarctica. But after seeing the elongated nature, the description immediately changed to the first remains of aliens found on Earth. Mr. Waters, who is allegedly an archaeologist from the reputable Smithsonian Institute of New York, reportedly said after the alleged discovery in 2014 that they just couldn't believe it. They didn't just find human remains on Antarctica, they also found elongated skulls. According to him, he had to pinch himself every time he woke up because he just couldn't believe it. Many conspiracy theorists arose instantly and pointed to the skull as alien visitations of Earth over the centuries. However, unsurprisingly, there are people who do not agree one bit with this theory. They have explained the skulls as a bizarre practice by some ancient civilizations to extend the length of the skull through manipulation from an early age. 
However, aside from the debates over whether the skulls were human or alien, there is now another major debate over whether the skulls were even found in the first place. Some people researched the origins of the story after becoming suspicious of the alleged comments made by Mr. Waters. Another thing that debunked the claim was that there seems to be no region in Antarctica called La Paix. Also, the people who did the research said they found no record of Damien Waters, who works for the Smithsonian. Despite all these substantial arguments against the existence of aliens, enthusiasts are not deterred at all, which is why their curiosity was piqued again when a creature was discovered in the Antarctic Ocean. From the depths of the Antarctic Ocean emerged a momentous discovery, an immense creature that has 20 arms. It shows a remarkable similarity to a strawberry. This enigmatic organism has captured the attention of scientists, and as a result of its appearance, it earned the informal name Strawberry Feather Star. The creature was found during a research expedition as the research team hauled their nets from the ice-cold waters of the Antarctic Ocean. They were awestruck at the distinct features of this strange creature. It is reported that these colossal entities can stretch anywhere from 65 to an unbelievable 65,000 feet. The researchers observed that these creatures possess an otherworldly appearance that distinguishes them from other invertebrate marine animals. And that's where speculations began to come in. A study was published about it in 2014. While the study refrains from specifying the exact and composition of the creature, the creature, also known as the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star, inhabits the depths of the Southern Ocean, thriving at depths spanning from 215 to 3,840 feet. What are your thoughts concerning the frozen mountain on Antarctica and the lost civilization? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.